Asgar, Hell, the World Tree, Yggdrasil and the Nine Worlds. From the depths of Hell to the heights of Asgar, the Norse cosmology is filled with an interesting mix of nine different realms, all held in the branches and roots of the World Tree, Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil features in a number of different tales throughout Norse mythology, including its eventual wilting during the events of Ragnarok. The Nine Worlds are home to the various entities of the Norse tales, from the giants in Jotunheim to the elves in Alfheim. This video will go over the tales concerning the World Tree, as well as an overview of the Nine Worlds and their denizens. The creation of these various elements differs quite a bit, and many of the myths about their origin remain unknown. It's possible that Yggdrasil has always been present in the cosmology in some form since the very beginning, or it sprouted when Odin and his brothers formed some of the other realms. What is clear is that in the beginning, there were only the realms of Muspelheim and Niflheim, with the endless void of Gnungagap between them. After Odin and his brothers slew Ymir, the primordial giant, they used his corpse to create the world of Midgar, as well as Asgar, and possibly the realms of Alfheim and Svartalfheim. It's unclear exactly when or how the other worlds were created, and even which worlds comprise the Nine is a subject of debate. Yggdrasil, also known as the World Tree, is the center of the cosmos and contains all of the worlds in its branches and roots. It is considered holy by the Aesir gods, and they convene at the tree daily to hold court. Odin hung himself from the tree for nine days in order to learn the magic of runes, and also drank from a pool of water at one of its roots' end in order to gain wisdom. That well is one of three, one located in Jotunheim, one located in Niflheim, and the third located beneath the tree. This third well, known as the Well of Urd, meaning destiny, is a holy place where three divine seers carve into the tree the destinies of all children. A giant serpent, Needhog, dwells beneath the tree where it continually gnaws on one of the roots until the day of Ragnarok. Odin also claims that more serpents live under Yggdrasil than any fool can imagine, and says that Yggdrasil suffers agony more than men know. Not a great deal is said about what happens to Yggdrasil during Ragnarok, other than it will shake and groan. Alfheim, meaning elf world, is the land inhabited by the elves of Norse mythology, sometimes known as light elves. This world is only mentioned in passing, along with the elves themselves, so not much is known about it, but it is likely a land of light and beauty. Supposedly, it was given to the god Freyr when he was an infant, and it became his homeland. The elves were often associated with the gods in some form, and possessed powers that would make them akin to demigods. Apparently, certain Germanic peoples would pray to the elves, particularly for healing from illnesses. Belief in elves supposedly lasted for centuries, possibly longer than worship in the gods. Asgar, meaning enclosure of the Aesir, is the home of the Aesir gods, the throne of Odin, and the location of Valhalla. Many buildings here seem to be made of gold, and the gods' furniture and utensils were also made of gold. Each god is said to have their own palace in Asgar, and from his seat, Odin can see over all of the worlds. Valhalla, meaning Hall of the Fallen, is a grand hall where the worthy warriors that died in battle are taken. It is said that the roof of the hall was made from shields, the rafters from spears, and it possesses 540 doors, each wide enough to accommodate 800 men walking side by side. When a warrior would die in combat, and Odin deemed him acceptable to bring to Valhalla, a Valkyrie would come down to take their spirit to Asgard. Valkyries, 
meaning choosers of the fallen, were female spirits that served Odin, and some sources claim that they would use magic to ensure that certain elite warriors would die in combat so that they could come to Valhalla. In Valhalla, these warriors would spend their days fighting one another, with their wounds healing each day, and would feast and drink every evening. When Ragnarok would come, however, these warriors were expected to fight alongside Odin in the grand battle. After the construction of Asgard, a giant smith came to the gods and offered to build a wall around the realm to keep invaders out. The smith said that he could complete the wall in three seasons' time, and asked for the hand of the goddess Freya in marriage in return. The gods talked amongst themselves, and told the smith that if he completed the wall in one season's time, he could marry Freya, but if any part of the wall was unfinished by the end of the season, he would lose his part of the bargain. The smith agreed, using his incredible horse to help haul boulders to build the wall, impressing the gods. With three days left before the end of the season, it became clear that the smith would complete the wall in time, and the gods needed to find a way for him to fail as they did not want to give away Freya to the giants. As Loki was responsible for agreeing to the deal, they threatened him with death if he did not find a way to keep the Builder from finishing the wall. Loki went to the smith in the form of a female horse, causing the smith's stallion to break free from his harness and chase after Loki. This event delayed the work for an entire day, causing the smith to fail his task. The smith flew into a rage causing Thor to appear and smash his skull in with his hammer. Hell was the underworld of Norse cosmology and the realm of the dead. Unlike Valhalla, which only contained the spirits of the worthy warriors chosen by Odin, Hell contained the spirits of practically all others that passed away, whether human or god. Rather than being a realm of torture and punishment, Hell is generally believed to be a continuation of life where denizens would continue doing many of the activities that they performed in life. That is not to say that there weren't parts of hell that were used for punishment. Those guilty of murder, adultery, and oath-breaking would find themselves being continually chewed upon by the serpent, Needhog. It would seem that gods could also visit hell while still alive, generally using Odin's horse to travel down the trunk of Yggdrasil. Hel is ruled by the goddess also known as Hel, a daughter of Loki that was commanded by Odin to rule the realm of the dead. She is described as being downcast and fierce looking, half black and half white, or half alive and half dead in appearance, and generally indifferent to the concerns of the living or the dead. Jotunheim, meaning giant world, is the homeland of the Jotnar, also known as Frost Giants. This world was filled with snowy mountains and dense forests, along with the great fortresses of the giants. A massive river that never froze over separated Jotunheim from Asgard, making it difficult for the giants to launch an attack. Overall, it is seen as a grim place, where most are unlikely to visit. The realm is ruled by King Thrym, and the chief fortress there, Utgar is ruled by a great giant named Utgar Loki. Midgar, meaning Middle Enclosure or Middle Earth, is the name of Earth within Norse mythology. It is located in the middle of the Nine Worlds and is surrounded by a massive ocean enclosed by a great wall made from Ymir's eyelashes. Within the ocean, wrapped around the world, is the Midgar Serpent, Midgar was created by Odin and his two brothers from the corpse of Ymir, the first giant, and they also created the animals and humans that inhabit it. Midgar is connected to Asgard by a rainbow bridge known as the Bivrost, used by the gods. It is said that the Bivrost is constantly burning, making it unusable for the giants to walk on to get to Asgard. Muspelheim is a realm of fire, and is the home of the fire giants. Muspelheim was instrumental in the creation of the first giant, 
and thus the creation of the world. Sparks from Muspelheim were also used by Odin to craft the stars. The ruler of Muspelheim is a great fire giant known as Surt, who in the time of Ragnarok will lead a great host of fire giants out of Muspelheim. Surt and his giants will be responsible for breaking the Beavrost before Surt spreads fire across the world with his flaming sword. Niflheim, meaning world of fog, is the opposite of Muspelheim and is a world of darkness, mist, and ice. Aside from its role in the creation of Ymir, little is known about this realm, although it is sometimes believed to be the same realm as Hel. Svartalfheim, meaning world of the dark elves, is considered by many to be a misnomer, as it is commonly believed to be the homeland of the dwarves. Svartalfheim is generally depicted as a labyrinthine underground complex of many mines and forges. The dwarves were known as legendary craftsmen, capable of working with the most precious of metals. They would build grand halls for themselves, and were also employed by the gods to craft a number of items. After Loki mischievously cut off the hair of the goddess Sif, Thor's wife, Thor threatened to break every bone in his body. Loki went to the dwarves who managed to make a headpiece that replicated her hair. They also crafted a binding to restrain the wolf Fenrir, a ship that surpassed all others, and Odin's spear, Gungnir. Most notably, however, they crafted Thor's hammer, Mjolnir capable of leveling mountains. Vanaheim, meaning world of the Vanir, is home to another grouping of gods different from the Aesir, known as the Vanir. Not much is known about this realm at all, and a number of different accounts and contradictions exist for the Vanir gods as a whole. Even the meaning of Vanir is lost. Some believe that the Vanir gods are associated more with nature and fertility, than the Aesir gods, while others believe that the Vanir gods are a relatively modern creation and weren't actually worshipped by Vikings. Some sources attest to a war between the Aesir and the Vanir that ended up with the two pantheons combining into a single grouping. Regardless, we possess practically no details about Vanaheim, and it's debatable whether or not it's even one of the Nine Worlds. While many of the details we have on the Norse cosmology are sparse or non-existent, it paints a creative image of primordial realms alongside the worlds of gods and men. These worlds and their inhabitants have inspired countless pieces of fiction over the years, and it's easy to see why. Although it may be sad to think that we might never learn more about how the Norse peoples viewed the cosmos, we at least have enough information to inspire discussion.